But this spring, the one-eyed female only laid one egg. The couple begins a daily routine. For five long weeks, they'll take turns incubating the egg. As winter ebbs, the well-practiced team seems to be headed for success. But spring is a fickle season. In mid-April, it was a freak snowstorm. I'll never forget it. The nest was being blown around by this violent wind. The snow was going absolute horizontal. And it just kept reminding me of what these birds are facing in everyday life. They were well into incubation. So the changing of the guard was always quick. Because you got to remember, they have delicate eggs that they're protecting and keeping warm. There seemed to be shifts of an hour, an hour and a half, where one eagle would sit on the egg while the other was out foraging for food. Through this storm, the male sat, waiting for the female to return. Tragically, something happened to her, we're not sure what. There's so many things out there that can work against the survival of these magnificent birds and makes you realize how fragile their existence actually is. Cold and hungry, the father abandons his egg. Now he has lost almost everything. He may find another mate and start all over again. But until then, he must defend his territory alone. When Europeans arrived in North America, the continent teemed with as many as half a million bald eagles. But as settlers advanced, the raptors became targets and their nesting trees fell to the blade. For raptor specialist Bob Anderson, the pioneer's attitude was simply arrogant and ignorant. All birds of prey were just considered vermin. I mean, they were all chicken hawks. They were all bad birds. Be it a, a, a bald eagle, a golden eagle, a red-tailed hawk, they were all shot. At the start of the 20th century, bald eagles were under siege across the lower 48. Alaska seemed like the last wild place, and there the bald eagle thrived. But in 1917, the territory introduced a cash bounty. By mid-century, over 120,000 eagles had been shot. And the gravest threat was still to come. After World War II, DDT came into widespread use to control insect pests. 
Bald Eagle numbers went from decline to freefall. When I was a kid, just to see a bald eagle was just a once-in-a-lifetime experience. The phones would ring if a bald eagle was seen anywhere. I mean, everybody would call. It would be on the front page of the paper. A bald eagle was seen. DDT made eggshells thin and fragile, sharply reducing the number of hatching chicks. The crash was taking place so rapidly, I was just convinced whatever eagle I saw was, was just going to be a dinosaur. In my lifetime, they were going to be extinct. In the 1960s, just over 400 nesting pairs remained in the continental United States. In the 70s, two centuries after embracing an icon of wildness, the U.S. declared the bald eagle endangered. America's symbol of strength had become an emblem of environmental degradation. But America was not about to forsake its troubled symbol. Researchers finally persuaded Congress to take action against DDT. By 1973, general use of the pesticide was banned. Almost immediately, bald eagles started to rebound. In 2007, the American eagle was removed from the endangered species list. By tapping our own better natures, we had given primal nature a second chance. It was late summer and the eagle had left the nest. It was a perfect opportunity to climb the 80 feet up and investigate. Bob and I wanted to have a look to see just what was on the nest. Wow. Wow, look at the food up here. Amazing. Here's a skull of some mammal, the top part of the brain of some mammal. And here we've got the remains of a, this is a, a rabbit foot here. You see a little bit of the femur. Bones here, and here's a feather, dark feather. It almost looks like it might be from a crow, possibly a duck. Bob and Neil decide to look for possible positions to put cameras. Bob is a nest cam expert. The one that we would, were really hoping to, to install here in the next week or two were multiple cameras. You know, one on this limb, maybe one on this limb, perhaps one on the other limb, all pointing into this general area, the bowl of the nest. You've heard of sea legs? We have to have tree legs when we're working with this job. Bob will have a bird's eye view in the coming nesting season. No matter whether the single male succeeds, or fails. October in the upper Mississippi Valley. The fall weather is mild and eagles are free from the burdens of the nest. Water birds, soon to depart for warmer havens, are briefly abundant. Joining the eagles that live here year-round are bald eagle migrants flying south from Canada. Some have flown 1,400 miles to find open water. This surge of eagles now turns to hunting. Bald eagles will sometimes chase mallards, but the river offers much easier prey. Coots raft together by the thousands, and these calm birds are a favorite meal. 
The strong wind allows an eagle the rare chance to hover like a smaller raptor, the kite. There's more than enough prey for every eagle, but thievery is in their nature. As one hunter lands at a muskrat hut, other eagles immediately try to steal his prize. This autumn bounty is a returning glimmer of the old days. In November, when the eagles are staging on the upper Mississippi, there is one place far to the north that is almost primeval, an untouched wilderness. This is the Chilkat River in Alaska, where great runs of salmon bring eagles from as far as a thousand miles away. The salmon have made their own epic journey in from the sea to spawn. They will die soon afterwards, but they will sustain this great gathering of eagles, as they have done each autumn for thousands of years. I've always wanted to go to the Chilkat, and it was not a letdown. I have never seen so many eagles in one place and there can be as many as 2,000 in one small area of the river. It's like going back into time, being there. Because bald eagles do specialize often in fish, their feet are modified with tiny projections on the bottom of the toes and the pads of the feet, which actually make it easy for them to grip fish. Their beaks are incredibly efficient at ripping the flesh of fish and other prey that they catch. Eagles generally can go fairly long periods without eating. They have what's called a crop, which is an extension of the esophagus, which is a storage bag for food. When there's plenty of food around, they'll take advantage of it by gorging themselves. And they can actually go after a gorge for a week to 10 days without feeding if they have to. But as soon as a bald eagle catches something, you can bet that within seconds, another one's gonna come in and hassle it. Back along the Mississippi, autumn is on the wane. Winter makes a gentle entrance. Bald eagles can now walk on the river although some seem to prefer skating. Gizzard shad can still be plucked up, but they will soon be entombed in ice. As open water freezes over, an eagle must be ever more precise.
At the hatchery nest, Bob Anderson has been keeping an eye on the widowed male. The male will always make uh, occasional visits to the nest. He still maintains the territory. He's working on his nest, adding little uh, trinkets that might make it more attractive. This particular nest is prime property. It's uh, you know located so close to a prime food source. And many, many eagles have been vying to get into the territory. Now that he's alone, an approaching female would be courted. After rearranging his corn husks, the male sets off to cover his territory. But now, another eagle buzzes the nest. It's a female. An aerial duet may be a chance for the prospective couple to size up each other's condition. A healthy eagle can cruise at 40 miles an hour in level flight and hit 100 in a dive. After a few minutes with their heads in the clouds, the courtship is over. Romance is a luxury. There's work to be done. When the eagles first land together on the nest, they're a little bit apprehensive, and I think the moving around of sticks together and grass together just kind of cements the bond. It kind of creates the marriage that will only get deeper and deeper as the weeks progress. But ironically, in this situation, the male has the final say. Even though she brings a stick and tries to put it in some place, the male will grab her stick and put it someplace else. We think she's a four-year-old. Uh, she does have speckles on her head, but you can see a little dark streak on the top of her beak. That dark streak tells us that maybe she's a four-year-old. He's got a young bride, probably coming into her first breeding season. Winter drains the last warmth from the river. Fresh perils appear for all the creatures along the Mississippi. And now, the most brutal season tiptoes in. In a workshop beneath the Iowa hatchery nest, Bob Anderson checks on his reality show. In what a view, what an incredible angle of looking at the American bald eagle. And there she is also. 
And he's the boss boy. This is his nest. I mean, he calls the shots. He's in charge of all construction. But no matter what she does, he comes back and, re and rearranges it. And 100% of the time. Now, she brought in a little bit of grass, and if she flies off now, he will go take that grass and put it someplace else. Despite squabbles over decor, the new couple is starting to embrace their common purpose. You can actually see them, they're bumping each other, they're, they're, they're interacting, there's no aggressiveness at all. A month ago, they would have never tolerated this being this close to each other. It's like now they're a team. We know that, that they're getting close to laying their eggs when you start seeing this behavior. The young female lays her quarter pound egg before dawn. Exposed, an egg can freeze in a minute. And so the father will need to move in for his first shift. The first egg was laid early in the morning. We actually missed it. We saw the birds uh, sitting in the bowl. We knew that it would be soon, but uh, we were kind of surprised to see this first egg. But we can see him, how careful he is with his feet. His feet are balled up, and he's trying to hide his talons. He doesn't want those nails to poke a hole in that fragile egg. It's touching to watch that sensitivity that this old guy has had, you know, with many, many eggs probably in his lifetime. If a second egg is coming, it's due two days after the first. Come on, stand up. She looks like she's about ready to stand up. But what do we have? We have two, two eggs. eggs. We've got two eggs. See this? You can see them both. <laughs> So do you feel like a papa? When they hatch, I'll feel like a papa, <laughs> yeah. Now we just have to wait 35 days from today to see our first baby. So. If eagles can feel pride or joy, the new parents must be brimming over. They will now work nearly unbroken shifts. But even such an effort can't guarantee that the eggs will hatch safely especially since they must survive one of the longest incubations of any bird along the upper Mississippi. Egg thieves abound. Raccoons and crows are everywhere. So each parent is highly attuned to any sight or sound of menace. And then, another storm. We knew a storm was coming, and we really wanted to see the first reaction of the birds waking up covered in snow. So we made sure we had our recorders running long before daylight. I was at first disappointed we had snow on the lens, but it just shows how ugly the conditions really, really are. I mean, this bird's covered in snow. And she's screaming right now at the male, going, come and relieve me, come and take my place. And he does. On a Minnesota farm 40 miles away, another family is further along. Their two eaglets have already hatched. The mother feeds her four-day-old daughter. The two-day-old male, hardly able to hold his head up, doesn't seem to be getting a fair share. Although both parents are dedicated, they have a blind spot for one particular peril, one within the family. Sibling rivalry.
It's not unusual for the older eaglet to turn on the younger and smaller. In nature's cold calculation, why share your meals when you can eat more alone? Neil has been documenting the story from a stifling blind just a stone's throw from the nest. The dynamics of this whole syndrome is that the chick that's beat up becomes weaker and weaker, cowers, is kind of afraid to even stand upright, and the female will always feed the chick that's more robust and it's called the Cain and Abel syndrome. The feedings go on for about oh, five to eight minutes, sometimes maybe 12 minutes. The bigger chick is getting up to 30 or 40 pieces of food per feeding. The little one would get about six to eight pieces. In the last few days, we've been worried a lot about whether the younger, smaller chick is going to survive or not. So we got our fingers crossed at little UD. We call him underdog. It's gonna be okay. The battle will resolve, one way or another, and soon. Water flows again at last. Spring has come to the upper Mississippi. Things are looking up for all of the creatures along the river. Eagles visiting from Canada now return north to their nesting territories. For year-round residents like the hatchery couple, spring means getting ready for eaglets. The first baby's hatched now, and you can see how kind of inept and clumsy this young bird is. She doesn't quite know what to do. That baby's begging for food, and yet she's not fully responding to it. And yet there's food off to the right in the nest. And these first few days were so painful for us. If it wasn't for the male, I don't think the babies would have survived. The eaglet is too exhausted to beg. And now the mother starts to feed herself. Parent and young are failing to connect. Suddenly, the mother focuses on her chick, as if seeing it for the first time. She's just, uh, she doesn't know how to approach it, and she's kind of, she's trying to ball up her feet. She just stepped on the baby there. It's a lot different than a hard egg.
This shot here really just surprises She had her tail facing into the wind. The winds gusted to 40 miles an hour, and the wind actually literally blew her out of the nest, and she almost took the baby with her. Something of an experienced bird would never do. It's been a trying day, and the stakes are only going up. Here's our young female just standing up, and as you can see, you know, we've got our second baby that it did hatch. And again, you can see that she's getting a little bit better with her feet. You know, already there's been a little bit of learning, I guess, that's taken place. And now the old man will come in, the, the guy that's so proven. That's him on the right. She's stepping off now. Here's the adult male. He's clearly fed babies before. He just walks in and just, he'll put the food right in that baby's beak after one or two tries. He's very experienced. And patient. It will take the eaglet a little practice to actually get something to eat. At least in this nest, there's no sign of sibling rivalry. At the Minnesota farm, Neil waits for the outcome of the sibling battle. The sister is alive and sassy, but what about underdog? Finally, I could see that Underdog was competing. He was actually getting food offered by the female and gaining strength. Today, he does look better. I think little Underdog might have a chance. Once the eaglets were six to seven weeks old, the Cain and Abel syndrome was long past, and they were both healthy and vigorous. Each day, these little guys will eat the equivalent of about a half a pound to a pound of fish. The demand on the parents is increasing, and they'll probably bring four or five kills to the nest uh, during the 